Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at a concept called route grouping inside Laravel that allows us to actually refactor and clean up our route files. So if you guys have noticed, our route file has been getting bigger and bigger every episode. And by the end of the course, we might have over, you know, 30 or 40 routes. So, and we have quite a bit of duplicate code, right? You can see these ideas repeated multiple times here. Uh, it's repeated here. We have this middleware auth repeated quite a, a few times. So, uh, using route grouping, we're actually able to refactor this a little bit and make it nicer. So how does that work? Basically, with route grouping, uh, you're able to group a bunch of routes that have shared, I guess they are similar to each other in a specific group, and that reduces our duplicate code. So how does that work in practice? Well, you can go ahead and define a route group, which uses the same route class we've been using so far. And it takes two arguments. The first argument is going to be a set of settings or properties i'll explain that in a second and as the second argument it takes an anonymous anonymous function or a closure and inside that closure you're able to define all of your specific routes so i'll copy all of these i'll move them inside the closure and i'll format this and what you're able to do in this basically properties or settings that i defined here these arguments is actually define a different bunch of things. So one of the things you are able to define is something known as a prefix. And what prefix allows you to do is basically, as the name suggests, add a prefix to all of your routes. So you see this slash ideas we have duplicated multiple times. We are actually able to go ahead and delete that and add it as a prefix. So if I go ahead and I add ideas as a prefix and I'll save this, save this, and you can add or remove the slash, it's not really important. All of our routes will automatically get this slash ideas added to them. Okay, I do need to add it here though. So if you go ahead and test this out and see if it works or not, we're getting not found. I believe I re delete, okay. Yeah, I, I forgot. I have my dashboard inside this route group. The dashboard shouldn't be here. So as you can see, if I go on the view, it's still working. I'll copy it here so you guys can see. It still has that slash ideas behind it so we have reduced some of our duplicate code by just using this prefix okay and again this slash here is not required you can add it or you can remove it it's up to you so uh, if you guys see for example here i don't have it it's okay you, you can have either have it or not have it both will work one more thing we can do is actually reduce the duplication in our names our route names and that is done by using the key as and this allows you to basically define a prefix for your route names. So I'll go ahead and I'll do ideas dot. And then I'll go ahead and I'll remove all of these. And I think I could use VS Code shortcut to do this, but it's okay. So if we go ahead and I'll we check our application, it still works, okay? And again, uh, if I type in the wrong prefix, we'll get errors because a lot of will actually, if you try to access a route that's route name that doesn't exist, it gives you an error. So that's one way we know it's working. So we have reduced the code quite a bit, a lot of the duplicates. One more thing we can do is also define middleware, okay, shared middleware. And that is done by using the key middleware. We need the E. And you can pass it an array of different middlewares you need. Now we still haven't covered what middlewares are in particular, but uh, we could, for example, pass the auth middleware to all of our routes. Now, there is one issue here. These two routes don't actually have the route middleware. So if we, it will kind of mess these two up. So if we go to now and try to access them, as you can see, it's redirecting me to the login page, right? So it is actually working. All of our routes got the auth middleware. I'll go ahead and I'll remove it from here. So we can remove all of these duplicates this as well and this as well now if for example you want to make sure these two don't have the auth middleware uh, there is one something called without middleware method you can pass this in and then define for example i don't want this one to have the auth middleware okay so for these two specific routes that shouldn't have it we can manually kind of uh, exclude them okay and now if we try to access our view page it actually works so all the other Kind of authenticated pages will have the admin deliver but these two won't another way of doing this is actually by pulling 
an inception and actually having route groups inside route groups. So what that allows us to do is actually get rid of this middle over here, define another route group inside here, and you can do it as many times as you like, and then pass in your middleware option inside another route group, okay? So I, here I can say auth. If you have only one middleware, you can pass it individually, but I'll like to always have an array, so we have the option to extend it later on. And then we need our closure or private function. So now we can actually move all of these routes inside this route group and we no longer need this exclude or without middleware function okay because i removed it from here so this is another option you can do it either way it's up to you which one you prefer or which one is better for your use case so yeah we can also define route groups inside route groups i generally like to keep it between two nestings i usually i don't go more than two but sometimes you may have to do it just depending on the situation and that's the basics of route group, guys. You can define prefixes. You can define prefix for your route names. You can define middlewares. Uh, there are a few other things you can do, but they won't really be useful because they won't apply to our application as of now. So one more thing that you may have asked yourself is, okay, what if in my application I have like 500 routes, right? Wouldn't that make this web file too big? Well, in those cases, maybe you have like an admin page and you have 40 admin pages, right? 40 routes for your admin page. And then you have like a merchant page with 40 specific routes. Laravel actually gives you an option to separate those into different files. So for our example, I actually like to divide our auth files, authentication routes into their own files. So let's go ahead and do that. The first step is you need to define a new file for them. So I'll go ahead and I'll put it inside our routes folder. Technically you can have it in some other folder but it's just nice to put it here so i'll go ahead and i'll create a new file called auth.php and routes are basically a simple php files so i can just cut this uh, i'll have our php opening tag and i'll define it here we do need to import auth uh, route and we also need to define import our auth controller and that is it so now we have our own separate auth route file However, if we try to actually access the routes, uh, we'll start to get errors. So it's giving us 404 not found. And the reason for that is we need to register this file before we can actually access it. And the way you can register them is through a file called route service provider. So if you go inside your app folder, providers, there is a file called the route service provider. Or if you're using VS Code or something like PHP Storm, you can always search for it. And uh, we still haven't covered what service providers are, but what you need to look at is inside this boot method, there is a line of code and you can see it's actually uh, referencing our web.php file, right? And this specific line of code is what's actually registering our route files, right? So if you wanted to create your own route file and register it, all you have to do is just copy this and then change this web to, you know, your route file, okay? And as you can see, we can also define prefixes which is as a you know URL prefix if you like, but that's it. It's that simple uh, for defining or accessing or registering a separate route file. Now, if your route files are exactly identical to your uh, you know web.php, they have the exact same middleware. You could technically just copy this group part and add it here. That's totally fine as well. Uh, both will work. So, but I think it's a bit more cleaner if we do it this way and it gives us the option to later on add any other options we need maybe i want to have a prefix here we can do that and it won't impact our web.php route so let's go ahead and test this and see if it works or not i'll go ahead and i'll reload the page and it's telling us git does not exist i think i imported the raw wrong route that's why it's happening indeed i did so I'll just, it should be support facades route, not routing route. Okay. You can always go ahead and copy it from web.php. Let's go ahead and see, as you can see, our login and register are now working. And I can even try to log in to make sure it works. And that is it, guys. So it does work just like that. 
And yes, that is the basics of route grouping and also refactoring your route files. Uh, this should be enough for majority of you guys. Obviously, as you get more advanced, there are a lot more things you can do. And the Laravel documentation is uh, has a lot of additional resources on this. And I might make a separate video going into more advanced details of route grouping and kind of how to refactor your routes. But this should be enough for now. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode and you learned something new. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content and support the channel. Thank you very much. I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.